This crop is cutting above its 110 tonne to the hectare estimate today. It's June in the Bundaberg district. We're on Mark and Brian Pressler's Rubiana farm and there's cause for optimism at the end of one of the better growing seasons of recent years. Yeah, we've just kicked off harvesting for the 2015 season and uh, the two blocks that we've cut so far have both gone over estimate, which is a good thing. We've had a pretty fair season as far as rainfall goes. We haven't had an exorbitant amount of rain, actually, but uh, the rain we had was very timely. Uh, in saying that, there's still dry periods in amongst it as well. It's the first full crop to be harvested since the fourth generation cane growers made the switch from high pressure water winches to low pressure overhead irrigation. A step forward in water use efficiency, the new lateral overhead system is already delivering a boost in productivity. The stuff that we've harvested so far is looking very promising. Well, our estimate is up a lot on last year and we're still cutting above that estimate at the moment. And the blocks that we've cut are what we classify uh, plough out blocks. So they really probably aren't some of the better, better blocks. So it's going to be interesting once we get into some of this other younger cane and plant cane. The early indicators of a successful 2015 harvest are no surprise to one of the region's sugar industry veterans. Bundaberg Sugar Services Productivity Officer Maury Haynes has been working with the Presslers to improve their water use efficiency. At his office in Bundaberg, Maury monitors soil probe readings at the Rubiana Cane Farm. He ties the increase in productivity directly to soil moisture being maintained in the so-called green zone during the peak growing season, meaning the crop has avoided being stressed. In a region where two-thirds of crop water comes from natural rainfall and the remaining one-third from irrigation, getting that balance of readily available water right makes a big difference. This period here is November to March and on this particular crop we have not seen that, that graph dip outside the proposed uh, moisture zone, so uh, that's important. What that's resulted in, he, he has an estimate this year that is around about 20 to 25 per cent more than any estimate he's had before, with the first full year of, of this system in, in place and a change to a, a different irrigation system, the lateral move where he's able to be more precise in the way he delivers water. It has been a little bit better the year this year than some of the ones in past, but as the graph shows that I've had before me, he still needed to irrigate, and the thing was, he did irrigate. Like many cane growers, the Presslers have long relied on high pressure water winches to irrigate their crop. Increasing electricity costs and potential labour savings made the switch to the more energy efficient overhead system increasingly attractive. The game changer, however, was the capacity of the overhead irrigator to get around the farm faster, maintaining soil moisture and minimising crop stress. We were running two water winches on this particular farm, uh, or two farms we've got here side by side, and couldn't get around in a timely enough fashion. We are taking oh, roughly 14 to 16 days to get around when we really should have been getting around in under 10. Electricity was just about killing us, the price of electricity with two 42 kilowatt motors running both the winches, running those two winches. We just had to do, try and do something different, we figured. Uh, we plan on trying to be here for the next 20 years. So, you know, this sort of an investment is so not, not a lot, not taken lightly. When he was trying to cover uh, nearly 50 hectares with two water winches and shifting winches every day, uh, he couldn't do it. He just didn't keep up. Once he's set that up with one lateral move system, he takes him 15 minutes to shift a hose each day and he can water the farm in four days and have four days off and come back and do it again. He's got more free time for other things. He's got more crop. The power cost is about two thirds less than it was before. The Presslers have spent around $200,000 upgrading their irrigation system. That includes replacing antiquated pumping infrastructure and purchasing the lateral move irrigator. The overhead system is 216 metres long 
and, including the end guns, has a reach of 230 metres. It emits water via rotating sprinklers at about 53 litres per second. It's a four span bower. They're not all the same spans. They can be between 45 and 60 metres long. You just set them up to suit your, your place, whatever obstacles you've got to fit around. It's got a steer, what they call a steerable cart. Uh, this particular run that it does, it has to deviate around about 30 degrees, sort of in the middle of the, of the run, so that because the farm's a bit of a funny shape. But in saying that, it does it with ease. Upgrading to low pressure irrigation has allowed for a downgrade of sorts in the pumping shed where major water use efficiency gains are being realised. Less energy is needed to pump water at a lower pressure and a new smaller pump has been installed that's partly solar powered. This is the new pumping system installed to run the lateral move irrigator on, on Mark and Brian Presler's farm. As uh, previously, uh, they were using two 60 horsepower or 42 kilowatt motors, uh, drawing roughly 80 kilowatts per hour to run two water winches. Those two water winches watered the farm with roughly 50 millimetres every 14 days. 14 days is simply too long in this environment. Seven days is about the time between irrigation events. This motor now replaces those two it's a 30 kilowatt motor, drawing approximately 30 kilowatts per hour, driving a pump that pumps double the water of the two pumps before at lower pressure. This pump is pumping 52 litres a second as against approximately 26, 27 for the two previous pumping systems. Mark and Brian also have a 5 kilowatt solar power system installed at this pump site. It's also impacting on the power costs, but because of the the vagaries of when power is actually taken, it's difficult to assess exactly what impact that has. Uh, the, the pumping infrastructure that was there was probably 40 years old, uh, fairly antiquated, was probably never very efficient when it was even new. Uh, friction loss is a major, a major energy consumer in irrigation. The existing line that we had underground was only a, a 150 mil pipe. We've gone to 200 mil, and I think. The friction loss is not, it's just not quite half from 150 mil to 200 mil. It's so much easier to shift a big volume of water through a bigger pipe. Testing done by Bundaberg Sugar Services clearly shows the efficiency benefits of the low pressure overhead irrigator compared with a water winch system. With that water winch trial test that we had Maury do, uh, that particular installation, it's cost, cost roughly about $1,800 a quarter. Uh, that's to water 8 hectares. This particular machine here waters 47 hectares, and for that same quarter the, the bill was $1,200. So significant savings. The ongoing drive towards improved water use efficiency is very much data-driven, and tools like soil moisture probes and weather stations are crucial to the process. Mark's farm is one of dozens in the district where subsurface soil probes are strategically located. The probe here is an EnviroScan system. It collects soil moisture data and sends it via a solar-powered telemetry unit to a server. Farmers can access probe measurements from around the district by logging on to the Cane Growers Bundaberg website and then clicking on the probe closest to them. They're very important. Uh, we have 25 probes across the district and we'll probably have more before the end of next year. That allows us to then have a website that we're able to display all of the results of all those probes constantly. Every two hours they update 24-7, which means that all our growers has the access to information. Essentially what we've tried to do is create this, this extension program that has close to 300 uh, participants. Everybody can be involved and everybody can be involved every day if they wish to do so. So it gives everybody and we've, we've tried to be strategic in the way that we place, place the probes to give people in all areas the opportunity to have some reference. Well this, this probe is the latest system that we're using. The, the main motherboard now for the probe is in, is in, the, 
is in the sensor, sensor section here. Uh, it works very well. We don't run down batteries very quickly anymore, so that's, that's great. Each sensor is placed to 10, 30, 60, and as I said before, one metre. And the way these operate is, is there is a current that runs from one side to the other through the tube, measuring the resistance to uh, determine the amount of moisture that's in the, in the probe. The trickery is that somehow it converts that into, into millimetres of data. It works really, really well with this because it, you can forecast exactly when you need to start. Um, hand in hand, because this machine can get around in such a short time, we can hold off on our start until we know ex the, the probe lets us know exactly when we need to start. The soil moisture probes are coupled with an expanding system of weather stations. Rural water use efficiency funding is being used to great effect to give Bundaberg cane growers a complete weather picture. There's data on rainfall to assist with irrigation events, wind speed to help with the scheduling of crop spraying and soil temperature that's useful when planting to optimise crop germination. Quite extraordinary how one small district can be so different in a matter of a few kilometres. And to help us manage that we have 10 weather stations across the district which allows us to then also provide uh, a two hourly update of rainfall and we also provide newsletters with total volumes for the month and how we're going for seasonal averages. Uh, we do that every, every month, uh, supply it out to the growers. Maury Haynes has tried many extension models over his decades in the industry and he believes this system, where growers can access information themselves in real time to plan their irrigation events, is the best yet. It's all about reinforcing a simple take-home message. Keep your soil moisture in the green zone and maximise productivity. We often talk about uh, the millimetres of moisture and what the soil holds and all those things. What we need to do is get people thinking about what's red is bad, what's green is good. And so our graphs on the screen are all about whether the moisture is rising, whether the moisture is falling, whether the crop is using moisture, whether it is not using moisture. That's, that's the message. And if you have got your own probe and you can stay within those boundaries, that's good. If you can see how to stay within those boundaries by a neighbouring probe, that's also good. And it doesn't mean you have to understand exactly what the moisture volume is. It's showing you a graphic example of what the plant is actually doing to the moisture. If we can keep the crop there for 200 days a year, we have every chance of reaching our climatic potential, which incidentally is about 42% more than our average.